Hi, this is Patsy's World of ICT, and welcome to our third and final part of the car racing game. So let's go to full screen presentation mode here and show you what we've got. Uh, you'll notice up the top here, it now has a best lap time, so it keeps track of what was your best lap time. We've also actually limited the game to uh, 10 laps, so you get a game over message after 10 laps. So one more thing which we'll show you is we'll start the game and go to the USA track. On the USA track now we have random oil slicks that appear and if you happen to run into one of them your car spins out and you're in a bit of trouble because you probably are <coughs> not going to get a very good time for that lap. You can see another uh, slick has appeared over there but it might be gone by the time we get to it so it's kind of best to just keep driving really and ignore the slicks uh, pretty much, unless you get near one and you think, oh, it's not going to go away, then you have to take some evasive action. So it just adds a bit of um, randomness to it. You can see it's keeping track of our best time. There, oh, I'm driving awfully at the moment and not making good times. So remember, you want to try get under 10 seconds or even faster. Uh, okay, so that's it. And let's get to the code and just show you uh, how this stuff works. All right, first up with the oil slicks here. Now, what we did was we've got this oil hazard and the costume, we made a little um, 40 by 40 uh, kind of thing with Bezier curves in fireworks and we'll put it on our website so you can get it if you need it and just put the word oil on there. And the script we wrote was that at the start of the game, you want that hidden, you don't want it coming up on the intro entry screen and then when they click the USA track, uh, we're just going to put some near the start line there, just a, a blob of oil for 10 seconds. And what we do after that with these four pieces of code down below is that we just set up some sort of random times, wait a random amount of seconds, and then show an oil slick at different locations, okay, which are pretty much the four corner areas of the track. Now, this was fairly simple. Uh, I suppose what we should have done was make four different uh, occurrences of the oil hazard and sort of let the first one appear, then it could broadcast a message to the second one that you can appear anytime now you want to. Because sometimes we have one appear and it doesn't last very long because it happens to be time up and another one appears so they jump all over the place. So this could be made a bit more sophisticated, but basically what we've got here works anyway. So how the oil slicks work is um, that the car runs into them basically. Now we need to go to the car script to see what's happening there. Now down in the car script we've added some new stuff here. We've just put that if we're on the USA track we've only added oil hazards for the USA track but you could have put them on more tracks if you want to. Um, we're just going to set the car's speed to zero then make it move forward 10 steps because the car's nose is probably touching the oil hazard and we want to move the car right into it so it looks like it's driven into it. Then we can have a repeat five with turn 90 degrees to give it some spinning motion but we don't want to, to stay stuck there spinning forever okay. So you need to have this um, move five steps here just outside of the repeat so it will actually move forward and the car will realize hey I'm not in the oil slick anymore and we just give it a speed of two uh, to move it away out of the oil slick and then you can start driving the car again okay so that's um, pretty much how the oil slicks work all right, just down the bottom here while we're in the car script, we'll have a look at how the 10 laps limitation works. It, uh, it is keeping track of the laps already from the part one of the build in the part one tutorial. And we're just checking here forever that if you've got past lap nine, so once it hits lap 10, we'll broadcast this message game over. Now the game over message goes to a game over sprite. So let's click on that and have a look at it. All right, now that game over sprite in the costume, if we edit that, it's a bit hard to see because it's in white. Let's just change it maybe to black. We'll have to get on the text tool here, um, change it to black. And actually, we should show you how we make that thing because it is a little bit tricky. Notice we've used Earwig Factory with font size 60. Okay, so 
we'll just leave that one there. We'll cancel what we were doing to it and let's just make a new one. So what you do is you just go paint here and get on the text tool, get your earwig factory, which takes a bit of work paging through all the things uh, to get to earwig factory and we'll just set it to size 60 there. Now take the magnification zoom right down so you zoomed all the way out. Now what um, your scratch will do sometimes is it'll set up your writing down here where you can't even see it and you have to grab this uh, black square and kind of move it up into the middle of the screen where you can see it. Then you can type your message game over and to change its color we will just grab uh, that little bar, that blue bar, and drag it with the mouse to color it all in and we'll get it to that white color and and say OK. And you can hardly see it on the screen, but and we'll just leave it there in the middle too is another thing, but you know, you can then uh, sort of uh, position it with the script. Okay, so let's go to the script for game over. What happens is when the start flag's clicked, as if we're not up to lap 10, if the lap counter is less than 10, uh, let's just put that thing in position up the top of the screen and hide it, just leave it hidden for now. And it's not until the lap counter on the car sends out that message that game is over that we show it on the screen. Now we had to kind of do the code like this because we had this problem that people could just uh, finish the race, game over would appear and then they could click the start flag without ever having clicked the stop flag in the top right corner. Then all sorts of weird things happened. Uh, we had a stop all statement in here as well to stop it all at the end of the game. And when people had clicked that flag to restart, suddenly you couldn't drive the car, it was still stopped. Uh, all sorts of things went wrong. So this is kind of the code which fixed all of those problems. Alrighty, the last thing we want to show you or need to show you is how we set the uh, best lap time sort of uh, recorder and put that onto the top right hand corner of the screen over here so it keeps track of what your quickest lap time has been. So back to the car sprite and if we just scroll down here in the car sprite, um, previously we had this stuff to count the laps and set a current lap time so we didn't change that at all. That's still the same as it was in part one but we added a whole new section of code um, just here. and. We also needed to add some variables. So over on the left hand side here we added best, we added lap. No, we already had lap, sorry. We added best and we added previous best, okay? Best is the one that shows on the screen. Previous best is something we use internally in the code here. So at the start of the game when the green flag's clicked, set best to zero, set previous best to zero. That's fairly standard to set you know, your variables to zero when you start a game. Now, there's a tricky thing because when you start racing, you haven't finished a lap yet. So you don't have a best time and you don't have a previous best time. So what we had to do there was check that on that first lap, things are different because there's no previous best time. So we have here, if the lap equals one, well then just set best to that lap time and also set previous best to that lap time. All right, if we're not on lap one, as long as we're racing and laps are greater than zero here and we're not on lap one, then it's going to go down to this else, which happens for all of the other laps that aren't lap zero when we started or lap one. And if the lap time is quicker, is less than the previous best, then we want to set the best to that new lap time, that new quicker one we've got, and we'll set previous best to that as well. But if the lap you've done just now isn't fast or isn't less than your previous best lap, it'll just drop down to this else here, and the else will just um, keep the best set at whatever your previous best was. All right, so that code, uh, we just had to play around with that and have things go wrong and not work and then try and figure out what we were doing wrong. But once we figured out that we needed to look at this whenever the laps were greater than zero, um, we needed special coding for lap one and that we needed to save off a previous best time by having a previous best variable. Once we kind of worked that out, it all came together and it all worked fine. So there's our finished game.
and most of the action will just go back to is on this car sprite where we are actually so that's where all the controlling happens uh, where we count laps get best times check if we're hit an oil slick and, and go into a spin and also set when it's time to uh, have the game over so we hope you've enjoyed our car racing tutorial. This is the last one because we were going to add some sound, but we tried to get sound samples off the internet, even tried making our own. It just didn't work. The looping cut out and didn't sound good. So this will be a sound-free game. Remember, you can go to uh, the details on this YouTube video, which will have a link to our website where there'll be full print screens of all of this code and sort of the steps we took to uh, finish off our car race here. So. Get into Scratch and race yourself around because it's a lot of fun.